Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, happy Thanksgiving if you're in America. Just made myself a pumpkin spice latte to drink before we get started. Mm. Okay. Um, today we're going to make a really fun glitzy black cake with metallics. Um, the cake is completely inspired by these really beautiful sprinkles. Um, so there's a black and gold mix, this one's called Black Widow, and a silver black and white mix which is called Mr. Gatsby. Um, I haven't decided which I'm going to use, I might end up using both. Um, we'll see as we go. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is make the toppers that go on top of the cake um, so that they have a chance to set while we decorate the cake. Um, so I'll get started with those. And um, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask me. Um, there is a Black Friday discount that starts at midnight tonight uh, Pacific time. Um, so that's, I believe, six hours behind um, England and uh, three hours ahead of Pacific time in the US. Um, there will be um, a sale on the whole website. And if you use my code, you get an extra, um, I think, an extra 5% off. So 35% off in total. It's British Girl 15. And that's on all of their sprinkle mixes. Um, and I have an Amazon storefront with all of my uh, the products that I'm using in this. If you're interested, the link's in the video description. Um, OK, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using, I'm so sorry, I had the screen on the wrong place. Anyway, here I am. Um, the first thing I'm going to be using is these um, silicon molds. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask them as I go. Um, the, these silicon molds um, are they're trending at the moment, these big ones, to make um, hot cocoa bombs or hot chocolate bombs. Um, and I'll be sharing a tutorial on that next week. Um, but I'm actually going to be using a smaller one. Um, I got them in the same set, so I thought I'd make most of the small ones as well um, to make some really dramatic black toppers to put um, on top of the cake using um, dark chocolate and um, black gel colours. Um, so starting by, um, I see I have I do have the chat open. I want to check that it's working. If anyone's around, say hi. Let me know that you're there, um, and I'll get started filling in um, these molds. What I'm going to do is I've melted some chocolate. This is semi-sweet chocolate. It's not fancy. It's a um, just a standard semi-sweet supermarket bar, um, and I'm going to add some black food color to it. This is just um, gel liquid colors. Um, hello, Virgin Islands. Um, it's just liquid gel um, and I'm just going to squirt a generous blob into it. Um, I know a lot of people panic when you use, um, when you use gels, like um, liquid, um, food, sorry, these are gel food colours, but people say you need to use candy colours in chocolate. They are more stable than these gels, um, the candy ones, but as long as your chocolate isn't um, overheated, as long as you don't add too much colour and as long as you don't over stir it, the gels will work. Um, as you'll see now. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more. The thing with gel colours, they're very concentrated, which is great. Um, so for pale colours, you really only need a drop or two. But for these very dark colours, you do need a lot to get a really dramatic colour. So there we go. Um, and what I'm going to do now is just place a little blob of this inside this mould. And I'm just going to use the back of the spoon to push it up all the way around the mold. So it's covering the entire mold all the way up to the top edges. And I'm just going to do one to show you how, and then I have a whole set that I made earlier that have already dried that I'll be using. And um, okay, so that's it. So you fill the mold, you, oh, I see a little pat here from your angle. Okay, make sure it completely covers the mold, you don't want any gaps. And that's why the, the red color for this mold is so handy because you really notice if you've missed a spot. Okay, and then I'm just using, this is a, a standard offset spatula, which I'm using just to scrape the top off so it has a nice smooth rim around the top. Um, and then this goes into the fridge for um, probably 10 minutes would be enough um, until it sets. So I'm going to put this in the fridge, but I'm going to take out a, a set that I made earlier so I'll grab that now and then we're also going to use this melted chocolate and um, that we've just made to create a drizzle on the bombs so I'm going to reuse that and um, which is why I've made a little bit too much okay so these are the ones that I made earlier and um, they are um, they're very small they're probably let's see uh, I guess an inch and a half 
wide. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is just pop them out of the mold, which is very straightforward. I'll move this out of the way so you can see. Um, you just pull the two sides of the mold apart and then use your fingers underneath to push the ball up and they pop straight out of the mold. Um, and I, I think I'm going to make 12, I'm going to use 12 halves to make six balls, but I always make a few extras just in case um, accidents happen along the way. And popping them all out of the mold. And if you do this with, um, in a warm, in a warm climate, climate um, or if you have very warm hands, I would recommend putting gloves on for this bit. Um, even, <laughs> even now, after doing just a few, I already have black fingers, but I always have stained fingers, so I don't mind. Um, okay, I've popped them all out. I'm going to quickly check the chat box and see. Uh, hello from Canada, Barbados, Spain. Oh, wow, this is really national. Um, wonderful. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I haven't done a live uh, on here for a long time, so this is fun. Um, okay, so we've made the the um, these bombs just so you can see and kind of in compa compared to a human. This is how small they are. They're, they're teeny tiny, which will be the perfect size to put several of them on the top of the cake. Um, if you've seen the hot chocolate bomb trend, um, oh, I don't have one with me. I've been making. I've made probably 50 of them over the last few days um, preparing for this tutorial that will be on my YouTube channel next week. Um, but they, the hot chocolate bombs are a, a much bigger version of these and you fill them with hot chocolate and marshmallows, put them in a cup, pour hot milk over the top and they explode. Um, so that's trending. I don't know if it's worldwide actually. If you let me know in whatever country you're in if that's a trend or if it's just a North American thing at the moment. Um, but uh, because of that, these molds are going crazy. And when they come in kits with different sizes, it's fun to find something to do with the, with the smaller sizes. Mm. Okay, um, so I'm going to use the same technique that you would use for a hot chocolate bomb. I'm going to turn this on quickly. Um, so I have, this is just a standard little saucepan, um, which I'm going to use to heat um, one half, just the rim of the ball. Um, so that it starts to melt and then it will attach to the other half. Meanwhile, I'm going to fill these balls with some sprinkles. I think I'll use, maybe I'll do a variety. So I'm just using a little teaspoon to, to pick up some sprinkles and then I will put them inside half of the, um, the bombs or the, the little shells. And the idea, and this is the first time I'm doing it, so it's a, it's a test run, but the plan is that um, I'll decorate these on the outside as well. And then um, similar to a, you know, the pinata style cakes where you um, cut into the cake and the sprinkles pour out of the inside. Well, um, they're really fun to see, but no one really likes eating the sprinkles. So um, I thought what would be fun is if I do it like this, then when you get your slice of cake with one of these on top, you can smash this open if you want to see the sprinkle explosion. So anyway, might be a, might be a hit, might be a total flop, but I um, thought it would be a fun experiment to try. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have enough for eight bombs there. I think um, that will be plenty. Um, so we'll start with those. And now I need to move these to the side a bit so I have space to put my pan down. Okay, so these are the, the bottom halves and then we're going to be attaching. Oops, there goes one of them, <laughs> bound to happen. Um, okay, so then the other halves I'm going to melt and stick on top and show you how that works. Um, it's a bit of a pain having to have a saucepan, but it's a, a really easy process. And just checking the chat quickly to see um, it is trending in Saudi Arabia. Oh, fantastic. Okay, not trending in Spain. No, no. Not in Barbados. Okay, um, okay. So here we have the pan. I'll check. Oh, not hot yet. Never mind. I'm going to leave it on for a little bit longer. And let's see, why is it not? Oh, I haven't plugged it in. Fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. Plug that in quickly. Okay. While it's heating up, um, since I forgot to plug it in the first time, let's just check it is in now. Yes. Okay. 
While that's heating up, it only takes a few seconds, um, I'm going to transfer the chocolate that we made earlier. Oh, actually it's set. I'll have to melt that too. Okay, plan B. I'm going to use this saucepan to, um, to melt the, the bombs, and then I'll put this chocolate, which has now melted, into the saucepan as well to remelt it, um, so that we can drizzle it over the top of the bombs. And to drizzle it, I'm going to be using a piping tip. This is a number three tip. Um, I'll show you over here so you can see a bit better, but it's um, a teeny tiny hole. It's um, number three, so it's usually used for, um, for piping uh, writing or for the pointless technique. If you've seen that where you cover a cake with a tiny, tiny little dot, um, this is my favorite tip to do that with. Um, okay, so this one I'm going to fill with the melted chocolate once we've remelted it and do a little drizzle over the outside of the bombs. Uh, let's see. Okay, the pan isn't very hot yet so I'll leave it for just a little bit longer um, and uh, let's see Nigeria wow people really are from all over um, I made uh, the, this um, pump, pumpkin spice latte this morning if you're not in North America then maybe you're not um, obsessed with the trend but um, sorry one second um, I made some pumpkin pies for different videos and um, I love pumpkin pie but can't eat that much of it um, so I made this pumpkin pumpkin spice latte with, I did coffee, milk, and then I actually put some pumpkin pie in it and um, blitzed it up and it is delicious. Um, I put a video and the recipe up on my Instagram this morning, if you're interested, it's um, British Girl Bakes on Instagram. Um, so that has the recipe and the, the video. Okay, perfect. This is nice and warm now. So I'll put it over here. And you want to drop this in for a really short amount of time, really just until you see the chocolate melting around the edges. And as soon as that happens, pick it up and put it onto your little bomb. I'll do the next one so that it's in the camera screen. Okay, so one more, there we go. And you don't want to leave these for too long because if they, um, as they melt, they start, the chocolate obviously starts to disappear as it melts or to come off. And then you end up with, um, with a misshapen sphere. So it ends up being a lopsided ball. Okay, so. <laughs> trying to show you what I'm doing. As you press them together, um, you see, whoops, they attach where the melted chocolate was, and then you end up with a full ball. Okay, so dropping them in for just a second. I'll do a few more of these so you can see. And, and you don't even need to, um, to do anything other than that. Just pushing them together um, is enough because then as the chocolate um, starts to set again um, as it comes back to room temperature, the, um, the melted chocolate sets and secures the two halves together. And that's it. Sorry in advance, I, <laughs> if I end up with black fingernails, they're not dirty, it's just covered by with these black, uh, black chocolate. You can do this, if you're afraid of coloring chocolate, you, uh, sorry, yes, if you're afraid of coloring chocolate, you can do these with candy melts. They're the ones, um, they're like a cupboard show chocolate, I think it's called. Um, they're sold by Wilton and they come in every color, so you can buy a pre-made black um, candy melt and then just melt that. Um, when you melt the chocolate, it's really important you don't melt it too long or at too high of a power because they, the chocolate will overheat and seize um, and then you won't be able to use it, it gets really grainy. So what you have to do is heat it for just 30 seconds at a time and I like to do it on 80% power in the microwave so that it doesn't overheat. Okay, any little irregularities on the outside of the bonds, um, any fingerprints or smudges of chocolate, are absolutely fine at the bottom because we're going to cover those with decorations now. So I'm going to put this back on the heat. I'm going to do the very lowest heat. And because this chocolate has set, I'm going to scoop it back out, put it into the pan, and just heat it for a few seconds to remelt it. Um, and then we can drizzle it over those bombs, and I will prepare the bombs for the drizzling while these melt. Okay, spatula. And if you're looking for these molds, I just bought mine on Amazon. I know that's not helpful if you're not in North America. Um, I'm in Austin, um, in Texas. Um, but if you are in North America, you can buy them on Amazon, um, they come in lots of different sizes, so just check the dimensions in inches before you 
you buy it, um, so that if you're looking for a hot chocolate bomb, you don't end up with these teeny tiny ones, or vice versa. Um, and I have an Amazon storefront, the link is in the description, and that has a, um, uh, a list, an idea list called Let's Decorate a Cake, and then there you can see everything that I'm using in this live stream. Um, okay, I'm just going to check this question quickly. Um, is there no other way to do this, like using a food gel or something to gum them together? That's a good question. You can, I have seen people will put um, the chocolate, oops, I think I've overheated this, let's see what happens. Um, people I have seen people do um, where they will put um, a, a little bit of melted chocolate in a Ziploc bag and then just drizzle that. Um, uh, sorry, people will put a little bit of melted chocolate in a Ziploc bag and put that around the rim of the bowl and then stick it together. So that then it makes do that and um, I'll show you how we arrange the balls back in this mold um, and the reason we do that is so that they don't roll around on the counter while we're trying to um, trying to do the drizzle um, so what I'll do is okay going back to the to the pan I'm just taking this is the chocolate that I'm using it's um from Trader Joe's, it's just a bar of semi-sweet chocolate. So I'm putting this at the lowest heat. Is that on? There we go. Okay. Oops. Sorry, it's very temperamental. Okay, doing it at the lowest heat to melt some fresh chocolate, which I'll add black to to do a little drizzle. And the reason I want to do the drizzle on top is because I want to attach some sprinkles to it um, to decorate. Now, before you melt chocolate, it's a really good idea to cut the chocolate up so they're all equal sized pieces so that it all melts at the same rate. Um, because if you have them in big chunks like I do here, um, it's more likely to overheat because you have um, yeah, clumps in it. Um, but I don't have a knife with me, so this is going to work just fine. Okay, I do need another bowl. Let's see. Okay, looking at the questions. No sound. Hmm. Okay, let me check the sound. Can anyone, can anyone else hear me? Uh, a few people have said that there's no sound, but it looks like there is. You can hear. Okay, perfect. If you can't hear, um, maybe the video is automatically muted and you have to unmute it. Um, okay, so take two. I've melted some chocolate. Um, you saw how quick that was. You just put it in the pan for a few seconds um, to melt it. And obviously you have to work with the chocolate quite quickly so that it doesn't seize up again. Um, okay, adding some black gel to this, just like we did when we made the, the little balls, stirring this in. I'll do it down here so you can see what I'm doing. So stirring the black into the chocolate. I'm going to add a little bit more. And these colors, I'm using Chefmaster brand colors. I use Chefmaster, Wilton, and Americolor. Those are the ones that are the most available to me. I like all of them. And um, the importance is that they are liquid colors, not, sorry, gel colors, not liquid. And the liquid ones are the ones you buy in the supermarket. Um, and they aren't nearly as concentrated, so you don't get as strong of a color. Okay, so I'm putting this black chocolate into my 
piping bag. I'm going to try and get this done without talking too much so that it won't, um, uh, sorry, it won't set before I get round to drizzling it. I'm putting all of my bombs back in the mold and I'm placing them so that the seam is facing upwards. I don't say you can see. So you can see the seam and that's because I want to do the drizzle over that bit to disguise it. It's a really subtle seam, but um, since I can do the drizzle wherever, it might as well be over that bit. There we go. So we have eight little bombs. I'm only going to use six, but I'm going to do eight just in case anything goes wrong with one of them or I don't like one. And then all I'm going to do is use my piping bag with this number three tip and do a little drizzle over each one, which I'm going to use to attach some sprinkles. And as I do the drizzle, I'm trying to cover up that seam in the middle of the bomb. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And now I'm going to add some sprinkles. Um, I'll do some with this black widow black and gold mix I'm adding a few more than I think <laughs> I actually need but I know they're going to bounce off and end up on the floor so uh, better safe than sorry so I've done some of those that's the black widow mix the black and gold and now I'm going to do some with the um, silver and white and black mold and um, I mentioned at the beginning that it, uh, there is a huge black Friday sale on all of the fancy sprinkles sprinkle mixes. If you're not in North America, they do do shipping internationally. And I believe if you spend, I think it's $50, um, you get free international shipping. It might be $100. Um, but check their website if you're, um, if you're interested. Okay, so there are the sprinkle bombs. Um, what I'm going to do now, before they set completely, is very carefully pick them up and just move them into another hole in the mold. And what this does is it loosens the chocolate from all of that chocolate that as I drizzled spread out across the mold and um, because if I left them where they are then these drizzles around the, the, the mold are going to stick to the chocolate um, when I pick them up later. So I'm going to move them all now. I've got two more over here. Ooh. Okay that's a messy one that I probably won't end up using. Uh, and then one more over here. Okay so we're going to leave those for um, for a while to set while decorating the cake. I'm just going to try and wipe some of this black off my fingers. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> this looks really grotesque. Very black. Um, stained patches on my fingers. Um, now the cake, I made the cake yesterday. Um, so it is assembled and ready to go. It is a, um, it's a four inch cake, which um, if you're, not very familiar with cake decorating, that means that the width of the cake layers is four inches. And um, they're about, I think, an inch and a half high, and I use three layers. And I will just grab them now. Let you look at those bombs for a moment while I take this cake out of the fridge um, and uh, place it on my turntable to start decorating. Okay. And so this is the, the cake. Um, four inches wide. I'd say it's probably about six inches high. People always ask me how big the cake is. Um, and I almost always work with these four inch cakes because they are um, they're the perfect size to be able to demonstrate a decoration on, but they, they don't serve a huge number of people so I don't end up wasting the cake on the inside because this is manageable for a family to eat. Um, I'm using my four minute buttercream. The uh, recipe is on BritishGirlBakes.com and I also have a tutorial and a frequently asked questions section about um, how to check the consistency. Um, this is what it looks like when it's in the bowl. Um, but yeah, the tutorial covers how to check the consistency, how to adjust the recipe for hot climates, um, why your buttercream might be grainy, how you can get it whiter. Um, every question you might have about buttercream, it's all on that website. Um, just quickly having a look at the questions now. Sounds working, that's good. Uh, is it not better to melt this chocolate on a double boiler? Yes, absolutely. The plan was I actually microwaved it before the live stream and then I took so long talking that the chocolate set so I had to remelt it. Um, don't have a microwave right here so that's why I did it in the pan. It was a, a backup, uh, backup plan. But yes, definitely better to use a double boiler. Um, let's see. Uh, what type 
are we decorating? Um, what type? The, the cake is a chocolate cake. Um, <clears throat> and the, let's have a look. Um, cake is a chocolate cake, the frosting is vanilla, and that's my four minute buttercream. And I also have this black buttercream over here. Um, I just want to make sure you can see this, sorry. Um, okay, the black buttercream is a, um, this is my four minute buttercream, it just has black gel in it. Um, and you need a lot of black to get this color. Um, I've used um, cocoa powder and melted chocolate to create a chocolate buttercream which is already quite dark and then I add the black gel and the recipe for that's on BritishGirlBakes.com as well. Um, and my plan now um, is, I need to clean off this spatula, I want to put black frosting on the cake but I don't want, I didn't want to frost the entire cake black. But, so this is an option to get black on your cake without um, using a, a huge amount of food colouring in the cake. Um, I have young children and I don't want to give them a ton of, of black colouring. So um, I'm just, to create the black effect without using a lot, I'm just putting a few, oop, still got soap, uh, sorry, not soap, still got water in here, it's not completely dry. Let's just shake that out. Okay. Um, I'm putting a few smudges of black around the cake and what I'm going to do is then uh, offset spatch, uh, sorry, frosty smoother. Uh, then I'm going to just smear it gently around the cake as if I was smoothing frosting, except since there's such a small amount on there, it's just going to smudge this black around the cake just to give it a, it looks a bit like cow print, um, but just to do it like a sort of partial frosting coverage um, so that there's already a bit of variation in the color on the cake and when we decorate this, um, the decorations are really going to pop because they'll be on both black and white backgrounds. Okay, so I need to go around one more time. You don't want to overdo the smoothing at this because if you get it too thin, it, it looks really messy um, around the cake. It's sort of a messy technique anyway, um, but with minimal scraping, it looks, I think, the neatest. Okay, there we go. Um, you can do the top of the cake as well. Um, I'm not going to because I'm going to be piping on top of the cake and also adding those decorative chocolates. Um, let's see. Um, I should mention actually, this is a, a quick tip if you are decorating smaller cakes. Um, you can bake them in those round, oh I didn't show you. Um, I use these spring form pans. They're intended for cheesecake, but they're really handy for four inch cakes because you can just pop out the bottom. So they're really easy to release from the pans after you bake them. Um, I find small pans, if you don't use a spring form pan, it's really difficult to get the cakes out afterwards because they're so lightweight. Um, so I use these pans. The other option, if you don't have special pans, is if you just have a round cookie cutter, you can, um, uh, you can bake a sheet cake um, like a rectangular cake or a large round cake and then use your cookie cutter to cut out the rounds and the cake layers so that they're the size that you want them to be and um, that works really well um, and then the other thing I wanted to mention about small cakes was oh and um, when you frost them they're really tricky to frost because they're so lightweight so they move around on the turntable in a, a much more dr dramatic way than a larger cake would because with a larger cake it's so heavy that it tends to stay in place um, this is my favorite turntable, it comes with a big non-slip mat on, but I have been using for years this one, um, which is, it's also metal, but it doesn't have a non-slip top, so I just use um, this on top. It's um, part of a, one of those non-slip drawer liners um, that you buy in, um, in rolls. I buy mine on Amazon, but you can probably buy them in a supermarket, um, maybe a furniture shop, um, and uh, and that stops the cake from sliding around, so that serves as a non-slip non surface. Um, I'm going to finish the cake on top with a few swirls to add some height, um, but while the cake is cold, oh, I should have mentioned, sorry, I took this cake out of the fridge um, just before adding this black frosting because the, um, the frosting needs to be set and very firm before you can apply the second color over the top. If you do it before the frosting has set, then you'll just um, smudge the colors together um, and make more of a watercolor effect rather than this sort of oil painted effect on top. Um, and um, so I, I use the, my four minute buttercream is a crusting buttercream, which means that when it sets, it gets really firm um, and then you can, you can do this. Um, I put it in the fridge for at least an hour before doing it so that it sets 
um, so that it's very firm. So then the pressure of my spatula isn't going to smudge the, the smooth frosting underneath this black. Um, I do have smudges of black frosting all over my cake board now, which always happens after frosting a cake. Um, what I do is I put the cake back in the fridge after decorating it, leave it there for about an hour until the, the, all of the outside decorations are totally firm. And then I use a paper towel like you saw me just do. I push it on my finger and I just run around the base um, of the cake board and that just wipes the smudges of buttercream off. But because the frosting on the cake has set, I don't damage the frosting on the cake as I'm doing it. Okay. Um, I have a quick look at the questions here. Please say hi to me. I'm Yosra Lysam from India. Hello. <laughs> uh, the, um, are the chocolate bombs filled with anything? Yes, there are sprinkles inside. We'll, we'll explode one at the end so you can see what the middle looks like. How long has it been in the fridge? Um, this, the, the cake, I think probably, well, several hours. Um, but. I would say an hour in the fridge is probably enough. You can do it in the freezer if you're in a rush. The challenge with putting it in the freezer and then continuing with decorating it is that the, when the change in the temperature is really dramatic, when it goes from the freezer straight to room temperature, you'll get a lot of condensation on the cake. This has been in the fridge for hours and it's now been out of the fridge for, I don't know how long it's been, I'm really bad at judging time, but maybe 15 minutes and there's no condensation on the cake because the difference in temperature from the fridge to room temperature is very small. Um, Thanks for doing this for us. You're welcome. It's really fun, just a quick side note, it's really fun doing these live streams. Um, I decorate on my own. I have two young children, so I do it after they go to bed at night. And it's really isolating um, decorating cakes on my own. Um, I didn't really think about it until I started doing these live streams. And it's like, even though you're not physically with people, the social aspect of it is really nice. So I appreciate all of your chat comments. Thank you. Um, please share how you make the buttercream black. Um, the recipe is on BritishGirlBakes.com. It's called black buttercream that won't stay in your teeth and it's using cocoa powder and melted chocolate. Um, or you can use just the gel color. You'll just need a lot more of the gel if you don't use the cocoa powder. Um, if it's gray, you need more color. It's, you need so much more than you think you need, um, like several tablespoons probably. I buy um, the colors in these bottles all larger and I'd probably use close to half of one of these bottles for a batch of chocolate buttercream to entirely frost a cake black. So you really, you do need a lot of color. Um, recipe for black frosting, BritishGirlBakes.com. Um, the buttercream, it's my four minute buttercream. That's also on BritishGirlBakes.com. Um, where can I find your work? What social platforms? Um, my um, Instagram, it's called British Girl Bakes. Um, that is, I share videos almost every day um, with different cake decorating techniques or time-lapse videos of decorating cakes. Um, I have a YouTube channel, British Girl Bakes, um, and I share a tutorial every week on a different style um, or how-to video. Um, I have an online cake decorating school. You can find that on BritishGirlBakes.com. Um, I have a free course, it's called 10 Frosting Techniques, um, and it shows you 10 frosting techniques. I had to get smooth frosting, ombre frosting, textured frosting, um, striped frosting, lots of different frostings um, and that's for um, I use buttercream but you can use most of the techniques for whipped cream or meringue buttercreams or ganache as well um, and uh, if you're in North America I've recently started doing some free live classes on Amazon as well it's Amazon live um, showing how to do things and which products I use to do them um, okay I'm going to do the swirls on top any more questions um, Italian or American buttercream um, Okay, yes, you can use whipped cream to frost a cake. And as far as which buttercream to use, it's really a question of preference. I love the taste of, um, people call it American buttercream, but um, it's the same as my four minute buttercream. So it's made with, um, it's just powdered sugar, butter, vanilla, and milk. So it's really simple to make. Um, it only takes four minutes. Um, but it's, uh, it is sweet. I definitely have a sweet tooth. If you don't like sweet things, then I would try um, a meringue buttercream. Swiss meringue buttercream is really popular. Um, and it's, uh, it's a lot less sweet. I personally don't love the flavor, um, but it's, yeah, it's a, a, a question of taste. The reason, um, aside from taste, that I love working with this buttercream, um, with the four minute buttercream, is that it, um, you can do so many decorating techniques with it that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do with other buttercreams because it is a crusting buttercream. Um, so when it sets firm, you can do things like stenciling or you can do buttercream cutouts where you freeze buttercream and then cut shapes out with cookie cutters and stick them on the cake. Um, I have a tutorial about that on my channel too. Um, any, any sort of um, decorating technique uh, 
that you can do with Swiss meringue buttercream, you can also do with American buttercream and even more. So that's, that's my preference. Um, this is the black buttercream that I used to put on the side of the cake. It's in a piping bag with a 1M tip. And I made a pipe swells on the top of the cake. Um, the same sort of swells that you would pipe if you were frosting on a cupcake. Um, and the way I like to do the swells is I do them like a clock. So this, say that's 12 o'clock, then this would be six o'clock. So I'm piping these two swells opposite each other. And, um, and that just helps me space them evenly around the cake. Um, so there's 12 and six, I'm going to do nine o'clock now. And as I'm piping it, I'm also looking at the other ones just to check that I'm piping it to the same height. Now three o'clock. Um, so that way I have the, the swells exactly opposite each other. And then I'll just pipe one more swell in between each one so that the swells go completely around the top of the cake. Um, and one more over here. Okay. Um, put this aside. Um, I'm going to immediately place the balls on top while the, um, while the frosting is still nice and soft. Um, if you wait for too long, then the frosting will set and then um, you won't be able to push things into it. So, going over here to my little bombs, picking them up. So now they should be completely set. The frosting, the drizzle on top isn't completely set, um, but that's okay. I'll just try not to touch it and then I'll put it into the, the frosting as well, pushing down to attach it. I'm going to alternate. I'll do gold for one and then silver for the next. Yes. Uh, and trying to push them down the same um, amount for each one so that all of the balls are level all the way around the cake. Um, I'm going to leave those last two so that we can smash one open and see what the sprinkles look like on the inside. Um, I do want to finish decorating around the edge of the cake. Now that it's been on there for a few minutes, I'm just going to touch it and see it's almost set. I have this, um, it's called uh, prism powder. This is brand new, I've never used it before. Um, so you can see, ooh, where is it, prism powder. This is also from Fancy Sprinkle, so you can buy it with that same that same link and discount code if you're interested and it's a I'm going to show you again because this is really beautiful um, it's just a completely edible glitter so it's made with all non-toxic ingredients and um, I'm using these brushes are from sweet stamp but it's like a little makeup powder brush except it's for cakes um, so I have um, just a tiny bit of powder on my brush there and I'm now going to just randomly dab it in a few places around the cake just to add a little bit of glitter. Oh, I love that, how, how it looks. Um, and I'm dipping it straight into the, into the pot um, and then onto the cake. Okay, and since the... Um, since the cake was set, so the white buttercream was already hard, um, when I put the black over the top, the black set really quickly because it's um, a very thin layer on top of the cold white frosting, and that's why the, the black is now so firm. I can dab it gently with this powder brush, and it's not, um, it's not smudging the black frosting, and it's not, um, uh, my, my brush isn't sticking to the black. Uh, frosting at all because it's nice and firm. Okay, so I could do this all the way around the cake. I'm just going to do it in a few places. I uh, don't know if you can see, you can sort of see that shimmer. Okay, I'll just have to see if there are any questions. Uh, glitter is gorgeous. It is. It is. Um, the buttercream. Use buttercream, it's best. Oh, yes love buttercream. Um, yes, this powder is really gorgeous. It comes in all different colors, but I really like this black. I thought it was going to be um, like pure black, but it's actually, it has a sort of silver sparkle on it, um, which goes really well with those sprinkles. Um, okay, so now I want to, I'm going to place a few of these sprinkles just randomly around the sides of the cake. Uh, just, whoops. Okay, not sure if they're going to stick. We'll see, because they're really large sprinkles. 
Yes, okay, so the sprinkles are sticking into the black frosting because that's still not completely set, um, but the white frosting, because it's so firm, they won't stick into that. So I'm just going to put a few onto the black part of the frosting. And um, if you want to, um, if you're using much sm smaller sprinkles and you want to create sort of a random splattering of sprinkles, you can dip your finger into water, dab, dab it on a paper towel so it's just a little bit damp, and then press it straight into the sprinkle mix and all of the sprinkles will stick to your finger. And then you can just push gently into the frosting and they'll transfer onto the frosting. These sprinkles are a little bit too big for that technique. Um, like this isn't going to stick to just a little bit of water on my finger. So I'm going to push it straight into the cake instead. Um, so I'm just going to do a few of these and then I'll add some of the gold ones. Maybe I'll do the other side gold. So we have two different color themes on the cake just for fun. Okay, and these have some little gold stars in as well, but of course they're not coming out when I pour them. So, uh, see if I can get one. Yes. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's a little gold star. <laughs> not sure. It might be too small for you to see from there. Um, okay. Uh, I'm doing that tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is put these aside over here. Um, I want to, what's the last thing? Oh, I wanted to put some gold or silver leaf onto the cake just for fun. Um, so to, if you haven't worked with gold or silver leaf, it is the easiest thing. Um, what's important is that you don't touch it with your finger because it's so thin and lightweight that if you touch it with your finger, the warmth of your finger will um, make it stick to you and then it's almost impossible to get off your finger. So you can either peel the, these, um, wherever you buy them from, the leaf should come within two little pieces of very thin paper um, to stop it from sticking to anything. So you can just, I'll show you both ways of doing it. You can peel it back like that and then just just choose a random place and just press it against the cake and then pull the paper away so you can see it's gone from the paper onto the cake um, and then once it's on the cake you can use your paintbrush um, to gently press it against the cake um, if you want it to be flat and you can also move it around a bit with your paintbrush if you don't want it to be too rectangular um, in its shape. The other way of doing it is just lift it off the paper with a paintbrush and then the, a little piece will come off. Oops, okay, of course it's not happening now. There we go, so it's on the paintbrush and then, ah, there we go. And then you can just press it against the cake wherever you want it to go and use your paintbrush to sort of direct it and mess up the shape a bit if you want. So it's a bit more random. Okay, there we go. So you have a bit more control if you use a paintbrush um, rather than um, doing it straight from the backing paper onto the cake. I'll do one more little section down here and there are a few smudges of black on the cake um, so I'll make the most of this as also a cover-up on those areas. There we go. The black buttercream is starting to soften since this cake has now been at room temperature for a while. So um, when I'm pressing the gold leaf or silver leaf against the cake, I'm getting some black buttercream coming off of my brush. So that's just warning me to be careful and gentle as I press this onto the cake. Um, and then, well, the other side of the cake, I guess, was going to be the gold side. We could put some gold leaf on there just for fun. Um, but I think you get the idea. So I'll stop there. Um, and. Um, okay, so there's the cake. We have a silver side. I started doing a gold side. Um, I'll finish decorating this now so that I can take a pretty photo of it. Um, and then I'll, I'll put that up on Instagram. But I, I, I might mix up the gold and the silver so they're all in the same place. I'm not sure yet. Um, I do want to smash one of those little bombs for you so you can see what it looks like. And I'm aware that it's going to be a huge mess. Um, but uh, I think it'll be fun. So let's move this move this out of the way, smash this one, and I'm going to move these sprinkles here out of the way so that we get the full dramatic effect of the smash. So I'll put this little bomb over here. Oh, I 
This is the reason why we put them in the mold when we did the drizzle, because they, they don't stay very still um, <laughs> since they're round. Um, so I'll leave that over there, and then I'll just get something hard. I'll use my, I'll use my paintbrush, um, and I'm just going to knock it and see if it breaks. Oh, no. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> okay, not very dramatic. But then anyway, the ball explodes and there are sprinkles inside. So um, you could use this, this idea with something more edible. So you could fill it with, um, I don't know, you could do brownies inside or uh, like little brownie crumbs. Or you could fill it with, um, if you want, you know, the, the cake pops. Um, if you wanted to do something like that where you fill it with um, cake mixed with frosting. Um, or you can just leave them as they are. I think they look really pretty as, as cake toppers on top of the cake. Um, and that's it. I'll quickly check and see if there are any other questions. Uh, which is better, buttercream or whipped cream for frosting? Totally up to you. Um, you can do a lot more with buttercream than you can with whipped cream um, because it is crusting so it's set so you can apply things over the top like the second layer of black. You wouldn't be able to do over whipped cream because it's so soft. Um, also whipped cream is more limited in that it needs to be kept in the fridge um, and it has a shorter, shorter shelf life. Um, and it's less stable than buttercream. So for decorating, buttercream is definitely um, a preferable option for me. People who use whipped cream say that it's easier to work with than buttercream when you're frosting a cake. Um, for me, it's the same. Um, I, I prefer buttercream, but it's what I'm the most used to. I've been doing it for uh, 10, 11 years. Um, so buttercream's m the, my, my comfort option. Um, and then there's flavor. So whipped cream or buttercream is just a, a question of preference. And I love your videos. Thank you. Can you make a live session on floral painted cakes? Yes, that sounds fun. Um, I have, I do have a recorded tutorial called, I think it's uh, called buttercream flowers or painted buttercream flowers, um, uh, showing how to, how, uh, 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 sorry, showing the technique. Um, and I have a class on it in, uh, on my online cake school on BritishGirlBakes.com um, on hand painted flowers. Uh, but yeah, live stream on that would be fun. I will add it to the to-do list. Um, okay, well, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you are interested in the sprinkles, the discount starts at midnight tonight Pacific time, and it's 35% off with the code BRITISHGIRL15. Um, and all of the products, um, including the sprinkles, actually, and the um, glitter, the prism powder, are also on Amazon. Um, those won't have the discount, but um, if you want to buy them there, they're on there as well. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you do have any requests on future live streams um, or future tutorials or online courses, um, you can send them to me. It's emily at britishgirlbakes.com. Um, follow me on Instagram. That's britishgirlbakes as well and my YouTube channel. And uh, I share videos on Instagram almost every day and on YouTube once a week. Um, and then if you didn't hear me say earlier, I do have a free course on 10 frosting techniques. Uh, it's on britishgirlbakes.com. So you can sign up for that there. Um, okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll check the questions one more time and then I'll sign off. So have a fantastic rest of your day.